and welcome to the Nonfiction Authors Association webinar series. These webinars are carefully designed to teach you what you need to know about writing, publishing, and promoting your nonfiction books. Whether you're listening live or on one of our social channels like Facebook, YouTube, or Vimeo, turn up the volume, set your monitor to full screen mode, and prepare to immerse yourself in this valuable learning experience. Now on to the webinar. Hey, everybody, and welcome. It's that time of year again, the second month of the year, right? February 2024. I'm Carla King, your host, Vice President of Business Development for the Nonfiction Authors Association and founder of Self Pub Bootcamp, Calm and Misadventures Media. I run the book publishing master course for the NFA every year and many other classes and workshops. And some of you may have read my Self Publishing Bootcamp Guide for Independent Authors. I've been helping authors learn how to publish since 2005, and now is the time that I see authors panicking a little bit because maybe you haven't started your New Year's resolution to get your book done, right? How about you? Have you started on your publishing resolution yet? Why don't you put that in the chat and maybe what is your book and what stage it's in? Maybe it's in the idea stage or a first draft for a final draft or edited and ready to publish. Maybe you're on your second or third or 10th book. Let us know because writing it down is kind of like a first small step to making a commitment, right? Oh my gosh, book number seven. Wow, idea stage, great. I find February is a great time to start because if you're like me, you find January kind of hectic, right? And it's a flurry of activities and decisions and making plans and promises to yourself and other people and breaking them. And now we're ready to really shake out what we really want to accomplish this year. Great. Number two, research, writing, editing done, finished manuscript. Great. Memoir two and revision. Sweet. So great. And also, please continue to make uh, comments in the chat. But if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A. And you might want to do that a little bit later and not in the chat. I'll be answering them at the end. So even if we go late, because I want you to become empowered to begin your plan, okay? Third book. <laughs> I thought I was done, but I'm not, says Peg. Jeanette. Oh, hi, Jeanette. I know some of these names. Good. Your manuscript's almost ready to send out. Book number three being edited. Joanna, memoir number two. Awesome. Okay. So by now in February, you're committing on a deeper level with what you truly want to accomplish this year. And in this very one quick hour, we're going to sketch out a plan together that you can refine in the next weeks that helps you manifest your vision and meet your goal by creating a set of actions that provide momentum by creating habits and the mindset that will actually make it happen. And I want you to know that you can start on some of these tasks today. I've got three of them. So get your pens and pencils ready and your notebooks, your big pieces of paper, your crayons. I like these huge pieces of paper. I can scribble all over them and then meet them up later. Whatever you need and get ready to create the basics of your 52 week plan or however many weeks are left for you uh, with your goal. I'd like first to share with you my holistic view of publishing though. Publishing holistically includes marketing and publicity, right? Because as soon as you start writing a book and telling people about it, you're marketing your book and building your platform. So how well and purposefully you do that makes a difference in your book's success, right? And once your book goes up for sale, then publicity should just kick in right away, immediately. But it can't kick in if you didn't send advanced reader copies to people in the media. So marketing activities and preparing for publicity necessarily go hand in hand with the publishing and the book production process, which we're focusing on here. I like to think of it as the publishing sandwich with marketing the piece of bread that you put down on the plate first, right? And publishing in the middle and publicity, that last piece of bread you put on top, okay? Well, that's because I have a publishing and production centric point of view here. But at any rate, it's all served up at the same time. So to make that sandwich, you have to have all the ingredients in your refrigerator, which means you had needed to go shopping earlier for that, right? 
and you probably had a shopping list and looked up a recipe because you knew you wanted to make that sandwich and that was your goal. Okay. So as a publishing plan, it's a recipe. I hope that analogy helps a little bit. Millions of people publish without giving marketing and publicity a second thought. They simply use Amazon's tools and boom, it's for sale, right? Well, authors who do this don't sell many books and the book industry is really suffering from overload filled with millions and millions of books that only sell between 100 and 250 copies and then just sit there on Amazon forever, I think, and buried, thankfully, buried under the more successful books in the genre, which is your book, your professionally published book. And others who do this end up feeling terrible later because once the print edition goes up on Amazon, it will never go away. It will always be associated with you as the author. And it can really be embarrassing, but you want your book to reflect you and your brand and feel proud about your book because you wrote your book to enhance your career, to assert your authority, to make money, to influence others, to make their life better, to inspire them, to educate them or comfort them. And I want you to feel good about your book and about the end result. And that requires more work. So to that end, and to thank you for attending, I'm providing you with a bonus, a 12 month roadmap, a 52 week roadmap that you can copy and make your own. And I'm not gonna give it to you right now, but I have all of your email addresses. And by the end of today or latest tomorrow morning, I'm gonna send you an email with a link to this webinar replay, these slides and a link to a Google Docs worksheet that you can use to start your own list. Okay, so uh, for now, scribble on your papers or take notes on your computer and you can take more time later to fill out this roadmap to plan out your tasks. Sound good? Good, good. Yes, sounds good, right? You're welcome, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Well, thank you for attending. This is a taste of what happens in the Book Publishing Master Course Workshop that starts in two weeks, February 20th at the same time and day of the week, Tuesdays at 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time, and it runs for six weeks through March 27th. And obviously the course provides many more details and resources and information that I can give to you in this short webinar, but I wanna make sure that you get tons of value from your time here with me. And I was gonna save all the information about the master course for the end, but because you know we're following the same kind of format, I decided to just incorporate it into these materials during our process. Because I really wanna make sure we have time at the end for Q&A. So during the session, I'll just be referencing the course segments as I mentioned the various topics. I hope that's okay because I think it'll save us a lot of time. A little more about the worksheet, you're going to get instructions on how to copy it from your Google account. So if you have Gmail, you have a Google Drive account, right? And my email is Carla at nonfictionauthorsassociation.com. So if you don't get it, look in your spam folder and look for that address in particular. So today we're going to lay down the bones of a publishing plan that will help you create a professional product that readers really want. And this skeleton has lots of gaps in it because it's just quick, right? But again, it's a great start. So first I want you to think about what is your book launch goal. Many of you aim to have your book in stores for the holiday market. So anytime between November 1st and 15th is pretty great, right? Is that your goal? Anybody has that goal? Can you get it all done by them? That is the question. Well, one of the questions is, do you want it reviewed by the book trade? The book trade publishes magazines and lists that booksellers and librarians and other publishing professionals read. And these people are actually looking to order and recommend books based on the opinions of the professional reviewers. A review here can make or break your book in the commercial market. And a lot of indie authors don't do that, but I want you to look into that possibility this will either accelerate your publishing plan or you'll move your goal. The thing is the book trades need your book three to four months before it's published. So if you were going to publish your book on November 1st, you're going to want that four months before that. You want it finished four months before that. So you may have to move your goal. 
Okay. Because there's a whole bunch of things that you have to do too. And it can be a little bit overwhelming. So when you know what's in the list, you'll be more prepared and feel more relaxed along your journey because you won't always be caught by surprise at this and that as so many authors are who are independently publishing because we're not professionals yet. You will be soon though. Okay. Yes. This is an astonishingly large list of tasks and it's not even all of them. And there's a page two I'm going to show you in a second. But as I said, I want you to see a holistic view of publishing, not publishing in a silo. And all of these go into your publishing plan, even though it's not per se book production. But some tasks go on at only one time, like getting your publisher imprint name, but others go on it every single week, like grow your email list or in social media activities, right? It's impossible to remember all of these things, which is why I wanted to give you the publishing plan, which again, you'll receive later today or tomorrow. So when we look at this list, there are a lot of things that aren't publishing per se, but need to happen before you can publish. This is the ingredient list for your marketing publishing publicity sandwich, right? And here's the rest of the list. Are you feeling as shocked as this guy? Are you feeling shocked by this list? Is anybody feeling shocked or, or did you already know it? I'm sorry, you're feeling shocked. But you know, once you have it written down, it's great. It's just a skeleton list. And honestly, I'm not showing the list of things that belong under just some of the items in this list and listing some of the pitfalls that can happen that you need to know about. For instance, if you don't format your book files correctly for seemingly obscure and nonsensical reasons, they get rejected by the distributors. And you don't want to risk miss missing your launch date because of these issues. So you'll need to plan for these glitches in your timeline, right? You don't want to experience these kinds of glitches only a couple of weeks away from launch date. Ha has anybody done this? Has anybody seen these glitches? Ingram Spark can be super particular, it's, though professional publishers know what th these things mean, but authors who are self-publishing have a hard time figuring it out. Yeah, you've had this experience, right? So you really need to leave four weeks to resolve this kind of thing because Ingram takes three to five working days to review and approve your cover interior files. And then you have to fix it and do it again. So make sure your whole book is done at least four weeks before that. But listen, you're the boss of yourself and you're in control of this entire process. And when you know what there is to be done, you can do some things yourself, the things you're good at and project manage the rest of it. I know some of you in the chat here who are in this webinar have hired out tasks and isn't it just a wonderful relief to do that? But can you hire smart, right? Do you know who to hire? Do you know how to be a project manager? If you do, ultimately you're going to spend a lot less time and a lot less money on the whole thing. And it's better to know now rather than proceed in ignorance and be sorry later. For example, I hear way too many stories about authors spending too much time and money trying to figure all this out on their own. So Kathy Tong authored a memoir titled Not Quite Supermodel, which she ended up fictionalizing, autofiction, right? And found me only after spending months and months and thousands of dollars trying to figure it out, just completely frustrated because she didn't know what she didn't know and hired the wrong people and the timeline got delayed. Um, some people get scammed by expensive vanity presses and have to extricate yourself, right, um, from that, which is such a shame. So I don't want you to do this. I want you to learn with this list and possibly the course and hire smart, spend your money in the right places and set reasonable expectations, not only for yourself, but for the people that you might end up hiring, Right for your team, even if it's only a team of one. So back to this long list of tasks, what can you do today? What can you do tomorrow beyond finishing your manuscript and book production? And right now I'm going to suggest you start with these three things, start sharing your writing right now, even if you haven't finalized your manuscript and number two, look for comparable books. 
and three, set up a business before you start doing stuff and throwing your social security number all around the internet, right? Enrolling with distributors, et cetera. So let's start with book comparable. This is getting to know where you fit in the marketplace, whether you're adding to an existing conversation or filling a gap. And it's going to help you tremendously in all aspects of your book publishing journey. And this is the first thing we actually tackle in the course. This comparable stage informs everything and informs marketing, publishing, and publicity. So I want to tell you about my client, Andy Edstrom, as an example of someone who really did the work with comparables, finding other authors and advisors and influencers. Andy is a financial advisor, obviously, and the author of Why Buy Bitcoin, Investing Today in the Money of Tomorrow. And he's quoted in really big magazines like Wall Street Journal, Coindesk, Forbes, Economist, and he had sent these media outlets advanced copies of his book and also to a lot of bloggers and podcast hosts, right? Some of them pretty obscure. And Andy shared with me that he sees very few book sales when his name is mentioned in Forbes or if he's interviewed in Coindesk or somewhere big like that, but that he gets a really huge boost in book sales when he's a guest on these really tiny niche cryptocurrency podcasts, right? So it's worth doing the research during your book comparables phase. So you can know to send out advanced reader copies or ARCs or ARCs, right? To the micro influencers. The micro influencers are people who have tens of thousands of dedicated followers on a topic and not celebrities with hundreds and millions of people, right? The riches are in the niches. Yes, absolutely. But getting those ARCs to these micro-influencers does necessitate finding them before your book launch, which is best done now during this first comparables phase, right? And this is what, if you're querying agents and traditional publishing houses, they're going to want these comparables. So if you're writing about crypto, you're definitely going to look at where Andy's getting interviewed. And if you're writing about real estate, you're going to want to find those micro-influencers, right? If you're writing a healing memoir, you're going to want to see where people who are writing healing memoirs like you are getting interviewed or, or writing. And I got to tell you, as a podcast host, I know it's hard to fill those 52 weeks, right? So they're eager to fill those weeks with guests. So in your publishing plan, you're going to mark down, write down when you need to send out advanced reader copies and have a good list. Start now looking at a list of people that you're going to send them to. Don't leave it for after these journalists and blog and podcast hosts wants to be in on the celebration. They want to say, Hey, here's a new book by an expert that just came out. They don't want to be late to the party. So publicity isn't something you start after book publishing and production. It's now. So that's what I mean about it all being intertwined holistically. I hope you're getting that. I hope I'm not hitting you over the head too much with that. You'll notice that I'm not calling this competitive analysis because readers and influences don't read just one book in your genre. Whatever their interest, they read all the books. So it's less competition than comparables. If you can meet them somehow, these other authors are your allies. And in my own comparables research about books and authors like me, I find my readers have the books on this page here. Adventure travel, exploration, solo travel, discovery, bicycle, motorcycle, travel, or travel. Interestingly, my readers love Cheryl Strayed's Wild about her walk on the Pacific Coast Trail, but they absolutely despise Eat, Pray, Love. Okay, well, this tells me so much about my readers and what they want and who they are. And what do you know about your readers? Do you know? Ask that question to yourself. Write that down on your notes today. What do you know about your readers? And before publication and maybe even before finishing your book is when you need to find out. Has anybody connected with their readers and figured out what they need before you finish the book and, and changed your book? Uh, because of that, I bet you have, some of you have. In the Publishing Master Course, we workshop this first, and it goes on for the entire six weeks and even beyond in the community, brainstorming with each other and using free and affordable tech tools that allow us to mine Amazon and websites to find books like ours and authors like us. And we can also figure out what our cover should look like and pricing and descriptions. If you have a trouble finding like, how much should I sell my book for? 
and the metadata, the keywords and the categories and what they're doing in your space, right? What are the other authors doing to succeed and where are they getting media? There's so much to this process and it's intimidating at first, but it can be super fun. It's something that you want to do. I, I want to do all the time because it's my interest. I want to keep up with what's going on in my field and adventure travel. So we're finding comparables is more right brain activity. Doing business is more in your left brain and not so continuous throughout your publishing journey. So it's a lot easier to plan because many, like I said before, of your uh, business activities are just going to be one-offs. These are things like creating an LLC and getting a tax ID or getting a doing business as and a logo, et cetera. And again, you want to get your tax ID, your EIN in the U.S., so you don't throw your social security number all around the internet. So maybe you already have a business. I know some business and professionals who are writing books in their field have this. Like my student last year who was in the book publishing lot, a master course in 2023, she published her book, e-learning gold, right? She rolled her publishing business into her existing company. And that made total sense for her because her company name, the Canadian Education Station, was completely appropriate for her publishing name, right? So she didn't have to set up a different business or a doing business as under her business. Of course, if you're a memoirist, you're writing a book that isn't part of your business, you need one. And I'm going to tell you, it's not that hard. So put these business tasks on your planning sheet this week, all right? We cover this in module two of book, the book publishing master course, along with legal stuff, which I know a lot of you are concerned about when you're writing about real people and brands and companies, and there are good solutions and bad solutions and even author insurance, literary insurance. And we go over all that and decode them. So you know that it's a good recommendation. Also, this is so basic. Part of doing business is owning your own book identifiers and not using the free ones that Amazon and other companies give you. In the countries where ISBNs are not free, like the US, Australia, and UK, you're going to need to purchase at least 10. So you can be identified as a publisher, because if you only buy one, you're identified as a self-published author. And in the US, this sets you up for distribution to libraries, which is a super profitable sales channel for, for many authors. And here, I just want to remind you that you need to assign ISBNs to formats, not stores. So one ISBN for your paperback, one for your hardcover, one for your audiobook, one for ebook, right? This is one of the big mistakes I see authors making all the time. So I wanted to point that out, especially if you're going for bestseller status, because the book industry tracks your paperback, right? And if it has three ISBNs, one from Amazon, one from Ingram Spark, and one from some company in Asia, they, they don't all count toward bestseller status, right? The book industry cannot tell that it's selling well. So uh, don't do that. Moving right along to book cover design and interior design, the sooner you can get your cover, the sooner you can start marketing and spreading the word. So it's also necessary if you want to set up pre-orders, which I'm going to talk about in just a sec. So right now, start looking for a designer and assembling all of your materials and use a professional designer who's design books in your genre and leave plenty of time to deal with interior images if you have any. My client, Michael Joseph Lyons, published a book of stories based on his childhood as an army brat, and images were a very important part of his book, and it wasn't a trivial process. Some of the images were his own, but he also sourced historical photos, and he had to make sure that they weren't under copyright, and if they were, he had to obtain the rights, which was hard, or find a different image. And then finally, we created a consistent look for the images with the grayscale treatment and fuzzy edges, as you see. And it turned out to be a really beautiful book. So in module three of the course, we figure out how to DIY, a do-it-yourself, a casual design, because you're not going to want a, a beautifully professionally designed book for your early readers and your editors, right? And then later hire out or create a more professionally produced advanced reader copies so you can send uncorrected proofs out to your 
bloggers and your influencers, right? And also we learn how to get and test all the various formats, including eBooks and also audiobooks, which are hugely popular. Finally, we're nearing launch day with distribution decisions and tasks, but even before you're finished, like even right now, you can start testing your book, your book cover by uploading your book and getting digital and print proofs. And hey, you can just put blank pages in the middle, right? It, you can just look at your cover like that. So plan to create accounts in advance with Ingram Spark and draft to digital Kindle Direct Publishing and Smashwords. They're all free. You don't have an obligation to use them. You can choose later. Do it now so that when you're in that really busy book launch period of your plan, you're not looking up your business bank account so they know where to deposit your money. And also you're going to get some great info from their mailing list in the meantime. Test out your book months before you're ready and take a look at your digital and print proofs and make sure it really looks good so that you can work out the weird glitches that I mentioned earlier. Does that make sense? <laughs> Those of you who've had glitches, that makes total sense to you by now, right? Live and learn. And with Ingram, okay, so with Ingram, we talk about discounting. You can offer the 55% returns program that bookstores require to stock your books, or you can just stick with the 40% for sales to the ebook stores, the online retailers. We decode all this and make smart marketing decisions about where you're going to sell your book in module four distribution and sales, because you really also do want to sell directly to your readers, maybe even early using your own website and maybe also even start selling companion products like workbooks and coffee mugs and t-shirts, right? Selling the publishing workbook, which I, I am having. This comes with the course and the new copy is here that I'm uploading today for the people who are in the course this year. <clears throat> but you can sell those from your own website. And then finally go back to your ISBN record in the U.S., it's Bowker, and update it with the final information. All these little things like the weight and the dimensions and the page numbers. So it gets put in the books and print database correctly so your book can be looked up by the booksellers, right? So when somebody asks for it at your local bookstore. <clears throat> and finally, this is really a... Um, a frenetic process, the launch process. And there are all kinds of reasons you might want to juggle your book releases ahead of the launch date. And we cover that in module five, because you want to make sure that your book is populated in all the stores in all the formats before you make that big launch announcement. For instance, some authors release or soft launch the ebook to Amazon only first, and then paperback with draft to digital or the hardcover on Ingram, because even though Amazon has hardcovers, they don't have flaps. So you probably want it from Ingram. So you'll learn about that and be able to put those three publication dates on your publishing plan. You might want to do that now. And then your launch dates won't be stressful because you'll have them uploaded already. And if you have pre-orders set up, that makes it even less stressful. So your plan includes everything you need to prepare for the launch of the various formats, such as the beta copies you send to early readers, right? Put that on your list. The advanced copies you send to influencers and the trade reviewers. And then you decide on the pre-order dates and pre-sales dates. And the Smashwords store is where you do pre-sales. You also want to do activities with your email and your website, such as setting up direct sales and also bulk, bulk printing, right? You're going to want to print in quantity if you're going to have physical book launches or go to conferences, have parties or print giveaways and many other details. And this is just like I said earlier, a rough sketch to getting your book launched. This is the next to the last module of the book publishing master course. And it's always a really exciting and very busy time thinking about how you're going to handle these things during this final push toward getting your book in front of readers who don't know you, right? Readers who do not know you yet. And what you're going to do is leverage the readers who already do know you to get to those readers you don't know yet. 
And that's why it's also critical to put that in your plan these next weeks so you're not surprised and you can make publishing decisions and strategic marketing decisions, especially asking for and using reviews from early readers is so important. My student, Lynn Fraley, she is such a superstar, really, going from knowing zero about publishing to launching this wonderful book, Cherish the Girls, A Well-Rounded Approach to Breast Health and Wellness. And during our live course a couple years ago, Lynn was really timid, like many authors, about beta readers and asking for book reviews. But she did it. And she said it transformed her from a writer with just a manuscript into an author who developed a complete plan to bring my book to successfully and confidently to market with reviews poised to be published on launch date. Then I'm just so proud of her when I can get somebody to ask for reviews and make it a success for her. This is what happens when you put all these tasks in a timeline and leverage the power of a group of authors in the live course community and the offline course community. Reviews matter so much and counts for a lot of exposure before release and pre-orders are an awesome way to get your book noticed. For instance, Sage Roundtree's book, The Art of Yoga Sequencing has been on sale for a while. Collecting orders to be fulfilled on March 12th, as you see here next to the gold button. When you put your book up for pre-order, readers can buy it as soon as they see it and all those orders count as sold on launch day. And most likely they will make your book a bestseller in one or more categories. And you can set up pre-orders for both your print and your ebook up to a year in advance. All you need is the book cover, your book title, subtitle, your metadata, description, bio, price, ISBN. And it requires minimum effort really because you don't even have to have the interior of your book done. And you can change and refine your cover. You just can't change the title, subtitle, ISBN, or author name. All right. So very low hanging fruit here. So put this on your schedule as early as possible after you're sure that your title and subtitle is all set. I doubt you're going to change your author name, but actually you'd be surprised at how many people accidentally misspell their own name. <laughs> so make sure to check all that. You also want to start and create an email sequence to be released near launch day. These need to be automatically sent out to your email list and that goes to your fans and don't forget about social media and don't wait for the last minute to do these things. Again, this is marketing, but it goes into your publishing plan. We're not leaving that out. There's a lot more marketing you can do. And if you're in Stephanie Chandler's live marketing course right now, you know that. And she also talks about book production in her course. So there's a lot of overlap between us. We just want to help make sure that the weeks and months ahead of your launch day are as easy as possible by preparing in advance with the list and checking it twice, right? So you, you're not as likely to get in a panic state at the last minute. And earlier I talked about lists, hanging off the list, and there are a lot of them. As I mentioned before, this list I'm gifting you with today is a skeleton list, but there are all kinds of other worksheets and separate calendars as well that help you get very detailed on individual tasks. So you can also put this in a project management app like Asana or Trello. Does anybody use Asana or Trello or something like that? I love them both and they're great for tracking and assigning specific tasks to uh, specific people and calendaring and notifying you and your team if you choose to outsource tasks. Um, so there's a huge list of things that you can do for your book launch that you can customize. Um, the book production list uh, is important and pretty set. This doesn't change much. Um, there are also author planning worksheets and spreadsheets and even very advanced list that certification students can use to help authors that hire them to publish. And let me just mention that certification track. It's a professional track that offers more for people whose job it is to assist authors. Are there any people here like editors and designers and marketing assistants, et cetera? So check that out. It's really great for designers and just people who 
want to offer their authors more guidance. I just had an author last week who was referred to me by an agent and he had an editor and I don't think he got any publishing direction from his editor because he used all the free ISBNs. And so his paperback has a bunch of ISBNs and he's willing to do the marketing, but the book industry is not going to reward him for his efforts because he has not published professionally with his own business and ISBNs. So if you're helping authors in any way and want to expand your services, this is a great way to do it. And I know many of you authors are committed do-it-yourselfers, right? Does, who's, got, who's a control freak who wants to do everything themselves and wanting complete control of the entire process? And it's a good learning curve, right? Especially if you're going to write more than one book. <clears throat> One of my students, Norm DeWitt, is he's a professional racing journalist with several book ideas. He tried it both ways. He handed off his first book, making it faster to an established publisher. And he had such a mediocre experience that he said he didn't even think it was worth it to write the other books at all. But just by taking matters into his own hands and becoming his own publisher, he ended up publishing that set of three books. And I believe he even got that first book back from his publisher because it was selling so poorly and it's now a box set. So he did it with better marketing and better publicity. And he also didn't have to share royalties with his publisher. So this is the magic of publishing independently and you can do it professionally. So how are we doing? Are we making progress with this plan? How many things do you have to do tomorrow on your list so far this week. Okay, we're almost done. There are so many tools that can help you streamline the process and automate and actual humans too, who can help <laughs> book reviewer here. Yay. Some of my favorite tools, I'll just mention a few book funnel, publisher rocket, AI editing tools like autocrit and pro writing aid and grammarly and email tools like mailer light. Google Drive, which I love, that helps you share your book and materials with early readers and customers and create forms and worksheets for your team. And there are people who can just help you streamline your tools, right? And you can take it from there. If you haven't heard of Katarina Fake, she was co-founder of Flickr and chairwoman of Etsy, to just name a couple of her accomplishments. She says so often people are working hard at the wrong thing. Working on the right thing is probably more important than working hard. Do you ever feel like you're spinning your wheels? <laughs> so I want to ask you, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to learn how to do? What do you want to spend your time learning how to do? What are you good at? And find that out and work on that. And that's the right thing that is going to push you forward to success you got to let go of the other tasks and know how to hire people, know, know what they need to do, be able to direct them and interview them. And with this information that I'm giving you and in the course, it isn't that difficult and it probably is, isn't as expensive as you might think. So by the time we reach uh, module six at the end of March, what tasks you need to do if you take the course. And that's when we choose the tools and find assistance and figure out what we can afford to hire out because we also consider budget, right? Budget's a big part of this because not all of us are DIYers, right? Do it yourselfers or even have the time or the skills or even willing to learn them. And there is plenty of human assistance and you can even hire a project manager if you want. But again, you need to know how to interview them, how to direct them, and that will leave you time to write more books, play on Facebook, whatever you like to do. <laughs> we all have our thing, like Adam Braun, author of the book, The Promise of a Pencil. Adam didn't even mean to write a book or even to start his nonprofit called Pencils of Promise, an organization that's built hundreds and hundreds of schools across Laos, Guatemala, and Ghana. Maybe you've heard of him. He was actually going to be a hedge fund manager when he traveled abroad and ended up changing the lives of thousands of others in his own life. He, he changed his goal to help all these children who didn't have access to pencils, much less education. And in the process, he became quite the influencer. And people listened to him. They gave him money for his projects. And I don't doubt that he makes a pretty good living for himself. And I completely don't doubt that he feels pretty good about his purpose in life and the movement he began. So 
all this just to say, I don't want you to let your audience down. You have somebody in mind, right? Or a group who needs the information or encouragement or motivation that you provide in your book or your business. So take that one small action that will give your idea or your movement the momentum needed to make it a thing, to do your good thing. And this is why I especially love working with nonfiction authors, because we all have a message, a teaching, a lesson, a change, an improvement um, that we want to see happen for a group of people or for the world. And finally, I want to share this quote by Stephen Pressfield. You know his name, right? Does everybody have a copy of The War of Art? I know many of you do. It's extremely helpful when you're feeling resistance toward doing the work that you need to do that's necessary. As he says, to overcome resistance is all about resistance. So we can live that unlived life inside of us. He says, we can't control the level of talent we've been given. We have no control over the nature of our gift. What we can control is our self-motivation, our self-discipline, and our self-validation, and our self-reinforcement. We can control how hard and how smart we work. With that, I want you to know that I'm here to help. And how can I help you? What questions can I answer? We have 15 minutes to the top of the hour, and I can stay later so you can get all your questions answered. Um, put your questions. I've seen a few questions in um, the chat and I see people raising their hands. Please instead put them in the Q&A, right? Um, and uh, I will get to them just after one more word about the book publishing master course. But I hope even if you don't take the course, I hope you've got a lot out of it and that you can get a head start on your own, especially with the worksheet that I'm going to send you. And I'll just leave up this slide for a minute, which gives you more information and the link to the bookpublishingmastercourse.com coming up two weeks from today, Tuesday at this exact time. As you can see, the course itself is $6.97 and there's a three pay option in the cart if that's hard for you. And it's so funny because I hear some people say, oh my gosh, I can't really afford that. But then they end up like Kathy Tong and so many more spending so much more time and money and frustration and then come back and take the course because she's worked with people and companies that weren't qualified and she didn't know how to interview, right? So the 697 is actually the cost of two hours of one-on-one -on -one con consulting with me. And I can't even give you the kind of information in two hours that I can give you in the six weeks, which is six hours of instruction from me and six more hours of gr group Q and A and, and uh, even more in the communities. And I know there's some of you on this uh, webinar who've taken the course and thanks for being here again. So it's really worth it to do this. Actually, it's pretty a pretty good bargain. And if you're a member of the Nonfiction Authors Association already, you get 33% off that. And if you're a thought leader member, all the courses are open to you. So uh, you can go right to bookpublishingmastercourse.com and at checkout, you can look at the membership options and add membership if you want to. I do only do the live version once a year and the group energy is always just amazing. Thank you, Ellen. Yes, the course is worth it. Thank you so much. Naeem, yes, you get the all the books shown here. The self-publishing bootcamp guide for independent authors, the publishing bootcamp for independent authors workbook, which is a write-in workbook with lots of blank spaces and the consumer's guide and all these cheat sheets and all of this. Yes, you can publish in Spanish, Louis. <laughs> you definitely publish in Spanish. So here we go to the Q&A and remember, you'll get a follow-up email from, from me with the replay and the publishing plan worksheet, okay? So I will stop the share. Thank you, everybody. Boy, it's hard to keep up with the chat. You're really active. All right, so anything upvoted? I'll just start with the beginning. <laughs> Patsy Dawson, I have five books in, out and three more almost finished. My problem is it looks to me like I either write or I promote. I'm not finding the time to do both. Patsy, this is the thing. With a, a good plan and good direction, you can hire an author assistant to help you promote. But I think that if you really do that first comparables exercise, 
that will direct your writing and it will direct your promotion. And it, it's almost a, a research step that you need to, um, what do I want to say? You know, find the other books like yours, connect with the other authors. You might even find a writing group, other authors who you might want to connect with and create an anthology together of stories you've already written. There's so much of that competitive analysis or the comparable analysis phase that is so great for marketing. And then you can outsource your promotion, your marketing. So marketing is everything you do before your book is published and it goes on after as well, especially if you're continuing to publish books. And promotion is what happens after you launch a book, right? You're in the news. It's a new book. It's all exciting. You're the new expert, right? It's newsworthy. People want to talk to you. Um, so you can hire an author assistant to help you find promotional opportunities and book awards and Facebook posts and Instagram and stuff like that. I would hope that you would hire this out. It can be, it's not probably as expensive as you think. Okay. I hope that helps. Jim Cooper bought a block of ISBNs, used one for the first book, a different for the second, loading the second book. The ISBN is already in use. Yes. That is one of the glitches that I showed on the screen. Yeah. This is too complicated and techie to go into, but if you send me an email, we cover this in the course and your book is uploaded somewhere else, some, somehow, somewhere. You can actually go to customer support if you have an Amazon author page and also email Ingram support and they'll tell you, but go to the books and print database and see where that book is located, right? That's the first step. <clears throat> yeah, Bowker, <laughs> good idea. Very, yeah, very sort of techy and weird and it can be different for different people. So thanks for asking that. That is just one of those glitches that we have to deal with. Paul, yes, you can participate in the course, even if you can't participate live in some of the sessions or any of the sessions, there is a replay and you're um, welcome to join the community and all of that. So you can join the group and um, even the community is pretty lively during the live session. Okay. All right. So I hope to see you in the course and we'll miss you the first week, but we'll see you the rest of the weeks. Michelle, ISBNs is, yeah, there's a whole, there's a four part course I have in the book publishing master course, exactly on your question about ISBNs, changing business names, et cetera. Just go to Bowker, just go to Bowker and <laughs> yeah, Jacqueline, you know what you're saying. Yeah. Listen to Jacqueline. Okay. Christy, when publishing an ebook that's more of a workbook, what services, tools do you recommend to deliver readers a digital fill in form and a printable version? You can do that as a normal book, right? You can, Christy, you can publish a normal book. Guide has write in a lot of write ins, right? Record font choices and page design elements and all kinds of things. And I, it's interesting because workbooks, Amazon doesn't have wire bound, but Lulu does. So Lulu, or maybe your local printer uh, has wire bound books, but they definitely cannot be distributed through Amazon. So you're going to have to find a way to distribute them yourself. Lulu has an API. That sounds scary, but it isn't. That will help you get that book up on your website and automatically deliver it print on demand. Okay. <clears throat> edible pdfs i don't know how to answer that that is pretty techy and i can find that out later so maybe you can um i might just be having a brain freeze right now because i know i've had that question before russ how many copies of your book can you order in advance from amazon ahead of the release date amazon only allows you to order five digital proofs at a time Okay. So I have actually ordered 20 books for orders at a time <laughs> for a digital proof. That's why I use Ingram for 
uh, digital proofs, but because their acceptance requirements, they get very picky. Sometimes it won't pass through Ingram. So I just order them through uh, Amazon and you can also order them through draft to digital. So check out draft to digital as well. They are a great company. They have amazing customer support and they will help you get more than five digital proofs. They distribute with Am with Ingram Spark as well. So they use Ingram Spark's distribution system plus more. And a lot of these companies do that. Publish Drive is a, a distribution company. They're located in Hungary. They do a lot of books in English. Don't worry that they're international, but they use Ingram Sparks distribution service, and they also use, they have a few Chinese channels to Dang Dang, which is the Amazon of China. So if your book in English might be popular in China, there's millions and millions of English readers in China. That's a great place. That's a great company to look to, to publish your book, to distribute your book rather. AI, I hate to go into that again, almost because it kind of takes over everything you talk about. I use QuickWrite for AI story development questions, like make this simpler. I use chat GPT-4 to just say, rewrite this for a beginner or something like that, or for ideation or outlining, create an outline from this draft book that I've written. So there's no best. <laughs> it's, um, it's, You'll get a feel for what you like. There are a lot of free trial periods with these AI tools, but QuickWrite, I really like that. It's from Adazing, Adazing um, which has been around for a long time, who does 3D covers and all that. So I like that Adazing has been a lot uh, around for a long time and they serve authors with other products. So you want to look also into the history of the company. All right. So that's my best answer. All I have on the nonfiction authors podcast, I have four podcast episodes about AI, three or four, one about creative, one about sort of a how, what is it and all that. So go ahead and look at the nonfiction authors podcast. It's on YouTube or it's on your podcast app and look for AI. Um, so that will give you some more insights. Debbie, I published my first memoir on Amazon in 2017 and nothing since. Would taking the course help me figure out what to do next? Yes. <laughs> um, you could even republish that memoir with another memoir or a workbook or something else. You can also expand the distribution using Ingram Spark or another distributor. There's all kinds of ways to relaunch a book and motivate you to write other books and figure out what to do next for sure. I think you're going to see that when you get the skeleton plan, the 52 week compass, the Google worksheet that I'm giving you that you'll get access to today or tomorrow. Um, I think you'll see how much there is to be done and how much you can do to succeed. All right. <clears throat> the chat comments will be available with the replay. Thank you for Sherry for concentrating on what I'm saying and not reading all the chat comments. Yes, they come with the replay. So don't worry about that. Don, how do I find comparables and what do you describe as the book trades? How can I connect with others? You can just go to Amazon advanced search. You can use publisher rocket. Um, we go over how to do that in the course. Um, and I have a streamlined way of finding it that helps you do it much faster and also find actual comparables and not fake comparables like old books and authors who really aren't experts. <clears throat> and Jacqueline, yes, the, your local librarian can help with that as well. Sherry, the master course is offered on demand the rest of the year. It's only offered live in two weeks. So February and March, it's live. I love the live energy, but if you just cannot do it, you can take it on demand later. That said, you can take the live course and see if you can just dip in here and there and you have access to it for the rest of the year and beyond. So you might want to think about taking the live course, connecting with the people in the course, because that group energy is so great. And a lot of times people 
connect as beta readers or writing group partners, right? Writing partners. So I would encourage you to do that if you think you're going to take it. Run Fang, the six week course, there are a lot of students. There tends to be a lot of students, but only a certain number that show up live. So I think the most I've had and the fewest I've had might be 10 and the most I've had in the live session might be 30. But even if there's a hundred people on the course, they don't all show up live. And if they do show up, if I do get more this year, we can also experiment with getting in Zoom rooms and groups. So I would love to have that challenge to see how we can all connect if we're a bigger group. Okay. I've run a lot of writing workshops with the Nonfiction Authors Association and my own self-pub boot camp. And it's always fun to help authors get together. So that's why I really love the live course. Colleen, ongoing support after taking the class is the Facebook group, the Facebook community. So it's open and it's also contains all the other students who have taken the course in the past couple of years. So you not only get access to the people you're taking the course with, but people who have taken the course the past two years who may or may not still be active. All right. I, I dive into that every day during the six week course. I'm in that Facebook group live every day. And uh, after I'm there probably every day for a couple of weeks after, and then a few times a week after that. So I, I seem to be in it all year long. I do like to track you. It's fun for me to say, oh my gosh, she, she wrote a book. She published it. Pamela, you don't have a budget and you don't like Amazon. Any suggestions? Go with draft to digital. Draft to digital is great. Ingram Spark is free too. So print on demand is free. William. Any thoughts on using a book as a vehicle to promote workshops? Well, I write adventure travel books that don't promote workshops. And I actually don't use my book to promote workshops. I use, I don't know, I guess they, that's all part of the business. My, my teaching business and my course business. If you have books as a business person, you're more likely to be invited to speak at conferences and to be able to promote your workshops and your courses. So yes, it's a good strategy for sure. Carmen, I posted my question in the wrong spot. Oh, I'm working on three different versions of a college success book, teachers, students, and parents. No, you don't need to copyright a title. Well, backronyms, I don't know. If you want to try to copyright the word backronyms, go for it. It's a long, hard process, but if you are using it already, it's, I don't know, how much value is this? This is something that you can just keep asking yourself. You can dig around on the web. For legal questions, I like to refer to Helen Sedwick. Uh, she wrote the self-publisher's legal handbook, and it's in its second edition. You can poke around her website, and I think she's uh, still around to answer questions. It's five minutes past the hour, but I'm going to stay on and just try and answer all your questions because there are more. So feel free to just stay on. Um, so thank you for sticking with me. Uh, yes, I will send slides and the replay link. Um, how long is each course segment, Elizabeth? I teach for half an hour to 45 minutes, maybe an hour. And then we, we do Q and A and discussion for an hour because one of my, I mean, it gives me joy just to not just answer questions after each course, but to discuss things with each other. And sometimes it becomes just a little bit of a party if there's no more questions and people start talking about their themselves and their books. At one time there was somebody living half an hour away from the other and they became writing partners. So I have, I spend two hours in the course and you are welcome to dive off afterwards, but I find a lot of value in that second hour. Sherry McGuinn. Hi, Sherry. You and Christopher, you'd like a fiction version of your course. Now, listen, this is geared toward nonfiction authors, Sherry, but I also like to say it's geared also toward the serious fiction author, but I've had fiction authors in, in the course and they've done great. So you can be a fiction writer in the course. I would welcome you if you're a fiction writer. So even though it's offered by, through the Nonfiction Authors Association, fiction is awesome. 
the uh, Elizabeth is self pub boot camp uh, guide for authors is my latest. Um, it does need an update in that last chapter, but otherwise it's current. Mary and his uh, copyright is free $33, $33. And you should do that after your book is published. It's no big deal. So do it again, go to helensedwick.com to talk about that. Carmen, Carmen, what is the name of the Chinese company, please? So I mentioned that publishdrive.com distributes with Ingram, and it also distributes to three Chinese uh, bookseller channels. Actually, one is Dang Dang, and that's the Amazon.com of China. Okay. <laughs> so you might look at Publish Drive to get your book in the Chinese market. They also distribute to Asia, all of Asia, not, not all of Asia, but at least one Indian company. It's kind of hard to get in Asia. I was in Thailand for a few months last year, and there's a lot of English language people who are there, digital nomads. And the book business is really big there, but it's very difficult to get an English book into the Thai bookstores. But China, India, and there's a few other countries. Okay, I hope that helps, Carmen. Lily, you've used Publish Drive for four years. Okay, Lily, I would love to talk with you. Would you please email me? Because I'd like to get an update on Publish Drive because I haven't used them for a couple of years. Um, and I just love Kinga Janentek. So she is, she's the founder of Publish Drive. I met her in San Francisco at a writer's conference. And she was like highlighted in Forbes 30 under 30 entrepreneurs. And she just, I think she just is great. She's an amazing entrepreneur. And she also really has nailed the market. So they have a different publishing model. It's a, it's a pay per month and not a pay per book model. Yeah. Oh, you're Hungarian, Lily. Okay, great. So Lily, are you in Budapest or are you in the U.S.? <laughs> so this is great because don't forget everybody the book market especially the english language book market right L lily who's in canada is a global market right so you're not just going to be publishing to americans and canadians and australians and brits right <clears throat> Lori grillo how do i find book reviewers in my field looking at other books is one thing we do to find book reviewers to see who's reviewed books like ours. So this is a step that we do also in the book comparables phase, right? You're going to find out who's reviewed all the books, where they appeared on the podcast, where are they publishing articles in magazines and blog posts. So again, the best place I think are comparables, although you can Google it as well. If you're a member of the Nonfiction Authors Association, you can also ask this in the author brainstorm exchange that happens every month. You're welcome, Debbie. Run Fang. <clears throat> GH, regarding crowdfunding for advanced copies. Such an interesting topic. Okay, so crowd crowdfunding for advanced copies, though. Oh, I don't know what you mean by advanced copies. So my friend Alan Carl, A-L-L-A-N-K-A-R-L. I reference him a lot. He wrote a big coffee table book. It's hardcover. Every page is just saturated with color. It's very formatted. It is so expensive to print. The book costs probably $65 each, right? So obviously that doesn't go through the Amazon print on demand model. You have, he has to buy 500 copies and then get it to his readers. So he kickstarted, he used Kickstarter to pay for printing all those copies, right? <clears throat> so look at Alan Carl, Kickstarter. Oh, he was also on my podcast. If you Google Carla King podcast, Alan Carl, you'll find him. So have fun with that. I'd love to hear back on that. Pam, Helen Sedwick, thank you, Colleen.com. Jacqueline, all right. Jacqueline, I'll see you next year, maybe. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Colleen, you need to distribute in the UK and Ireland. Uh, Ingram Spark is great. Um, Amazon publishes to all those places. Draft to Digital publishes 
worldwide. Ingram Spark is the largest book distributor in the world. So if you use them, you're going to get in all the bookstores online and brick and mortar, it will be available. So we talk about how to make your book available by setting a 55% discount. We talk about the returns program and publish drive will help as well. So you have a lot of choices here, a, a lot. Um, Kay McClish, I'll run down the program in just a second. Name, throwing early drafts around, contacts taken. I don't quite know what you mean about taking credit from an author. Oh, I see, copyright. Um, some people are very afraid to put their work out there early in case they, it gets stolen. It isn't unheard of, but it's a very rare. If you have an idea, it's probably <laughs> likely that other people had that same idea at some point. Look at Tim O'Reilly's take on copyright copyright and copyright infringement. Tim O'Reilly, he was my boss in 1995. I blogged from the road from a, a motorcycle, a, a trip around the United States on this crazy Russian sidecar motorcycle in 1995. And the internet was just starting and Tim O'Reilly of O'Reilly and Associates hired me to do one of the first blogs, like real-time blogs. And he's been in the computer book industry for a long time. And he has a lot of insights on all of this. He's also an open source geek as well. So he has a lot to say. So go ahead and look at his take on this. All right. I can share the screen again. Yeah. Okay. Everybody. I'm also looking at the chat and it's great to see you all chatting. I can't wait to go through the chat. Uh, Colleen, I'll see you in the live class. Um, for those of you who want to see what that's all about. You can go to uh, book, book publishing mastercourse.com, but I can share that screen and you can ask a question if you like. Here it is. Module one comparables, right? Yeah. I'm going to put it in the chat. Thank you. There you go, it's in the chat. So you can go ahead and click on that. Comparables, if you can attend live, great. If you can't, but I just, I could go on and on about comparables. I know I have already. <laughs> Module two is setting up your business. Module three is book design. Four is distribution. It goes over Ingram Spark and Amazon and Publish Drive. Module five is about your launch and module six is about products and tools and services and hiring help and budget and all of that. Okay. If you go to the book publishing mastercourse.com, you can find all the information about it. And listen, you can also email me if you have any questions at Carla at nonfiction authors association.com. And I'll be super happy um, to answer them if I can in the chat, Raymond, congratulations for book three being finished seeking endorsements, please do that ahead of time, ahead of uh, your publicity drive. <laughs> yeah. Surging for an agent. Meredith, it's very difficult. The whole agented publishing model is broken. Unless you already have a platform, don't you hate that word, the platform, the author platform, unless you already are known in, in your industry, or if you're famous, or if you have a really big list or a very niche list, you're probably not going to get a traditional publishing deal. It's very difficult. And even if you do get a publishing deal, it's going to take your agent maybe a year to find a publisher. And then when you get a publisher, it's going to take another year or two. So we also, I'm <laughs> sorry, Amanda, I said platform. <laughs> so if you, um, there are several choices and we go over this in module two. We talk about traditional or legacy publishing. There's a reason we're saying legacy publishing these days, um, hybrid publishing and self-publishing and custom publishing and vanity presses and all of that. So you have a lot of options here. So agents um, is kind of a pie in the sky sort of thing. 
these days. I'm so sorry because it is broken and it broke in the 2000s and the early 2000s. And thankfully, and this, I just have to say, I love technology for allowing us to take matters into our own hands. And people thought, oh, so the publisher is awful, awful. They're crowding the market and they are, but professional self-publishing is different than just self-publishing. Like I was talking about the fiction writers with 20 vampire novels they put up in a year, right? And don't get me wrong, some people are very successful at that and they're very famous, so they can do it. But professional independent publishing is what we're talking about here. All right, everybody. So please go to bookpublishingmastercourse.com. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody, for sticking with me. It is 1118 Pacific time. It's a gorgeous day in Santa Cruz. <laughs> I'm going to go for a walk. Remember, when you're writing and you're working, take breaks, right? Take breaks and feed your, feed your body as well. I appreciate it. You will get the link to this replay. You will get the slides so you can study the slides and you'll get my gift to you, the plan, the publishing plan that I promised. Okay. So look for that later today or by tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you in the course. Thanks for listening to this webinar hosted by the Nonfiction Authors Association. Members enjoy full access to replays of all of our educational webinars and many other benefits. Not a member yet? Think about it. We offer tremendous support, guidance, educational resources, courses, free reports, and a welcoming community for you, wherever you are in your writing and publishing process. We also produce the annual Nonfiction Writers Conference offered entirely online since 2010. Find out more about the NFAA and how to join at nonfictionauthorsassociation.com.